Good morning. So today I want to go over the use of uh, oil bars uh, or paint sticks um, and uh, other media uh, while drawing onto uh, primed or gessoed paper. So let me turn this around and here we go. So let's talk a little bit about some materials here. Um, here first of all is Wow, some paper. Um, this has been gessoed, actually. I, I primed this up yesterday using some, in this case, fairly cheap acrylic gesso. I got this stuff from Hobby Lobby. Um, and uh, so I, I just basically painted it on the, the surface of this paper. Paper is um, uh, Canson Editions, so it's relatively uh, sturdy paper. If I get this in the right light, you can kind of see the edge between where I painted the, the gesso and where the paper is. I didn't paint up to the uh, edge of the tape. Sometimes that tends to rip when I tape pulled it off, so I just wanted to leave that. Um, over here, I have done the same thing except um, for this, this one, this half of the uh, demonstration, I wanted to experiment with um, putting some uh, textures into the gesso as it dried. So here is uh, some screen from a, a screen window that broke and I, I embedded that in there so I have um, some screen texture there and that's going to make a big difference when I go to draw onto it. Um, I had this was right here, that uh, little yogurt cup which created uh, a ring around it. Here's some uh, plastic wrap that's created these kinds of textures here, which is going to be super fun to draw into some more circles. Uh, this little souffle cup had some cyanotype in it from a uh, messing around demo I did yesterday. Um, and uh, which leaked all over the place, so that's going to become part of the drawing. And let's see, another circle, some bubble wrap. Let's pull this off. Let's see, you're going to see that texture there. Um, so that's some fun things to do with the gesso, and um, you'll see that that is going to make obviously a difference when I draw into it, especially well with all of these media. I'm going to draw with some charcoal and some oil bar and some pencil, just go after it with the mixed media. But back to the uh, the gesso, the quality of the gesso makes a difference. Uh, for those of you who are painters, you understand this. Uh, a, a more uh, high quality gesso is going to be stiffer and um, it's going to dry differently. So if I had a thicker gesso, a better quality than this, um, when I lay this out, I could leave actual brush strokes in that gesso and it would dry with those brush strokes. Those brush strokes are then going to uh, become part of the drawing as I, as I work into it with charcoal and stuff. So the uh, quality of the paper and the quality of the gesso make a difference. So you might want the cheaper gesso so that it lays down smoother like this. Um, or you might not. Um, let's see. The... Um, this charcoal is charcoal that I made uh, from some vines from my backyard. Grape vines, chili vines, some wood that was laying around. And so I made this charcoal by cutting down those vines, putting them into this old Russell Stover chocolate bin, wrapping it up with a little wire, and putting it into the coals of a uh, backyard uh, little uh, backyard fire pit that my family has that we, we go out and roast marshmallows in every once in a while. And I just stuffed this into the, the coals at the end of the day, left it overnight, and it reduced those sticks down to um, bits of charcoal. Let me get this open again. That are fun to draw with. Different qualities of wood are going to di give you different um, looks to the charcoal and feels to it. So if you use something softer like a grapevine, you'll get a s certain kind of a look. If it's harder wood like an apple uh, tree, little brand, uh, bits off of an apple tree, you'll get a different kind of a look. It'll be a harder charcoal, give you a softer or lighter look to it. So that's fun to mess around with. No need to spend big money buying charcoal if you've got a little fire pit. These are all 
remnants of Windsor and Newton brand oil bars, and I used to draw with these quite a bit uh, when I was uh, doing this kind of stuff, and you can see the remnants of them. Windsor and Newton, what they basically are is the oil paint in stick form, and um, they are all, they have a feel of a big uh, tube of lipstick, I guess. They're very soft, very mushy. Um, they have a uh, uh, coating around them or a, uh, a sleeve around them so that you've got to peel that off. Here's some white. You can see the way that that looks there. You've got to peel that off so that you can draw with it. Um, that's titanium white. They're a, a little bit pricey, uh, although, uh, as you'll see in a second, it's worth it if you get into this. Um, they're very good for expressionist drawing, um, uh, but the price is prohibited for some people. So I went to the uh, get some, some food for my uh, animals, uh, my pets, the other day at um, the... Uh, uh, tractor supply store, Murdoch's would have these any place like that. These are livestock markers, so if you have a big, big he herd of cattle or sheep or something like that, I guess, you would use these to mark those livestock to differentiate them. And um, usually they have uh, black and white and other colors, but I guess somebody is hoarding the uh, livestock markers during the uh, corona apocalypse, and this is all they have left was these very, very bright colors. These are a pigmented oil-based stick media, just like the Windsor and Newton, with the exception that you um, are going to get a far uh, less high-quality oil pigment and far less of a pigment count. They're still incredibly fun to draw with, but they um, are fugitive. I'll show you that what that means in a second. And th they don't last as long, but, uh, but um, this set of three was just over five bucks. And uh, so I'm going to go over here to my computer and show you. This is uh, Amazon Prime. If I were to order some of these, and I, I would order something like this, uh, 18 bucks, set of 11, full color range, or you can get uh, this, you can get a pack of 12 white for, for $30. Um, not that, I mean, that would last you forever, but you go through a lot of white, of course, when you're drawing, just like you do when you're painting. So um, I, would, I would go with something like that. Um, there, a set of, of 12 of the Windsor & Newton would cost you probably 60 or $70. Um, so, um, let's see, I'm going to show you some drawings that I did as an undergraduate using, uh, paint, uh, sticks and oil bar. Um, when I was learning, uh, this was a very important, uh, learning experience for me. Um, these are, this drawing from uh, introduction to figure drawing class is kind of hilarious now. Um, all kinds of proportional issues and such. Um, but uh, time limited drawing, very expressionistic, um, using cattle marker or livestock markers, and uh, smudge sticks, blending stumps, and um, paint knives. Uh, to, to create this, scrubbing back in to uh, adding and removing from the drawing and working very quickly. Um, what uh, is important about this is that uh, as I get in closer to show some of these marks, um, the, the color that you lay down first is very important. So here um, a white was laid down and a black was drawn and smushed into it. So you get a scumbling technique. In the background, a black was laid down and a white was introduced over the top. So it sets into the gesso, or in this case, just paper. So I didn't give a crap as an undergrad and uh, just drew into paper. And what, that, what happens with the oils uh, from the oil bar or uh, even oil paint is that they begin to rot the paper. And you can see these figures back here in that outline, right? Um, the uh, paper begins to disintegrate over time. And this was about 20 years ago, maybe longer than that. So this, the lifespan of this is going to be limited because of that negligence on my part of not gessoing the paper first. 
Um, so you will also see as I get closer in here that um, some of the color here uh, of that oil bar, that cheap cattle marker, has begun to turn yellow. So the highlights uh, are becoming um, less distinct. So that's why uh, a higher quality paint stick would be advisable. Um, but it, uh, f for my case, uh, uh, during this time, I was uh, needing to be cheap and to just learn from the medium uh, to see what it could teach me and very instrumental. Um, this is another drawing, still life drawing, uh, a little more clear. This uh, uh, white up there is, uh, this I was using some uh, white Windsor and Newton oil, oil bar in there and you can see how that's lasted much, much better. Um, but again, uh, you can see the, the, the paper was taped down so that um, it didn't buckle. This is an Arches uh, heavyweight off-white paper. Um, and you can see it as well is beginning to rot. Um, and it actually, uh, you can actually smell the decomposition of it. Um, and uh, so, but, but I want to show you some of the mark making that's possible in there, drawing back or scraping back in, some scraffito and uh, assertive mark making um, that is super fun and, uh, and uh, has a lot to teach, uh, has a lot to teach you. Um, this drawing here, way bigger, um, so I, uh, um, quit drawing on paper with this stuff. This is actually on acetate, single mat acetate, mylar maybe. Um, it's been a long time. You can see the back of the drawing through, and this is kind of what I was experimenting with was the rever seeing the reverse side of the drawing, both, both sides of the drawing at once. You can see the pencil marks there, the, the initial exploratory marks to create the composition um, come through on this, uh, this other side of the drawing. So you get this sort of uh, dual sidedness to it. The uh, mylar is super fun to draw on. This is never going to rot. The, the, the surface isn't going to rot. That plastic is going to be there. But the color of the pigment uh, of that cheap oil bar is uh, yellowing. You can see that in there. So that is uh, something that I wish now, I like this drawing still, it's got some compositional issues and such, but I wish I would have used a better medium on there, uh, which is why I got better mediums. This is a, I started to get into some landscape work and uh, influenced by Turner and uh, the Romantics and this is actual oil bar, um, and over this a long period of time it has held up no problem. But again, I did not gesso that surface first, and so the paper itself is rotting. And uh, I'll leave that to some archivist someday, um, or my daughter, after I pass, and she inherits a stack of drawings. But anyway, you can see the really, really fun way that you can layer color and mark um, and uh, it's got a lot to teach. So um, let's get back to this. I'll take up just a little bit more of your time and uh, begin to lay down some marks on this paper. All right, so let's see what this looks like on here. Um, uh, this is grapevine here. Let me see if I'm in the right spot. All right, so down here. Um, and uh, there you go. So you, you can see that mark making. And here is where the scumbling makes a difference across the, you can see the, the textures of the gesso in there. Um, use an automatic eraser. It erases out beautifully. It pushes around beautifully, just like charcoal does. Um, 
but it is much more durable um, than having it just on paper. It has a different feel to your hand, too. Um, if I uh, use a pencil, it receives the graphite beautifully as well. Let's take it over here and scumble across the surface of this texture. You can see that screen texture come out, which might be really cool for uh, certain kinds of, of uh, applications, maybe skin. Or, uh, there, that's pretty cool. Get up after it and let that, that circle come out. And very interactive, very durable. Now, uh, oops, I'm sorry about that. Here's a little bit of this oil bar getting in there into the charcoal and the, the white, it's titanium white, just like an oil paint is, here begins to pick up that charcoal. So this mixed media is pretty interesting to deal with. Um, let's open these up and see what this, these jarring colors look like. All right, so here's this livestock marker. It has this cardboard wrapping around it so you can hold on to it. Um, I need to take an X-Acto knife or uh, a blade of some sort and remove this outer coating so that I can make marks with it. Come off, baby. So there's that color muted by the charcoal. There's that color over the white. Sort of get this sort of pasty orange. Let's see here involved with that, that texture. Black coming back on top of it. And then I can use a blending stump to blend. Windsor and Newton does make a colorless blender. This is like adding linseed oil to your paint. So you can extend and mush around whatever colors. This has got uh, a coating on the top. It hasn't been used in years. Let's add some yellow in there. I can take and scrape that stuff back out with a palette knife or a fork or whatever. My printmaking tools, gouges, V gouges, stuff like that. This is a really fun medium to play around and experiment with. Great uh, for, gosh, anything. Objective studies, portraiture, landscape, abstract work. Whatever you're up to, I totally recommend playing around with it and um, seeing what you can come up with. Yeah, and uh, if you have any questions, please shoot me an email. Otherwise, experiment and have fun playing.